Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm back with another beat making tutorial. I haven't done one of these for a while, so I wanted to give you guys something. Uh, I'm going to talk about today uh, how to widen your your mix on your your instrumental or you know whatever production, whatever you're working on. It's how to give it uh, take advantage of the stereo field and just kind of widen it a little bit. So I had some people asking me these questions. So I want to show you guys four different techniques that I use in my own production to kind of help out with that. There's other ways you can do this, but these are just kind of some of the techniques that I use uh, in my own music. I'm using Ableton Live. As you can see, uh, only one of these techniques is Ableton Live specific, so you should be able to apply these to whatever uh, software, whatever DAW you're using to make your, your music. So I hope these help out, and let's get into it. So before I get into the, the, the different widening techniques, what I want to do is I want to play um, what we're going to use as the sample for this particular tutorial. This is um, a sequence that I took from one of my earlier beats that I did. And that's what we're going to use as the basis to apply these techniques to. So I, I first just want to play it without any, um, any kind of widening or any kind of stereo imaging or anything to it. This is just raw. Okay, so that's with no um, no kind of techniques or any kind of widening applied to that. So the first technique I want to talk about is uh, automated panning. So this is a this is a pretty basic, pretty easy technique you can use. Cause, you know, quick and easy to do. Um, so that's the first one I want to touch on. Basically, what it is is just uh, automate your automating your panning using some sort of a curve or some kind of a waveform. Namely, usually you want to do like a sine wave, and then you can um, you know adjust how far if you want to pan it hard left, hard right, or you know adjust the frequency as well. So I'm gonna do that. What I'm gonna do in Ableton is I'm gonna go to the audio effects and I'm gonna drag over um, an auto pan. Now again. The same technique can be applied to whatever doll you're in. This is just showing this in Ableton. So, um, basically, with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to emulate a sine wave. Um, and then, you know, adjust the frequency and, and amount accordingly. So, depending, I don't know exactly you know what the best is for this particular beat but just to give you an idea I'll go ahead and, and set one up and let, let this play through And so with that, you know, you hear a little more of the, you know, going left to right. You hear a little more of the using this the stereo field. So that's kind of that's one technique you can use. You can adjust that. You can do a higher frequency and do a smaller amount and just kind of give you just a little play back and forth from your left to right channel. But um, that's a good technique you can use. It's, like I said, it's just an easy something easy you can do. Uh, so now for the second technique. Um, I'm not really sure what to call this. I'm calling it trap track duplication. Um, I'm not sure really what this is called in the you know in the field or whatever. But uh, basically, what this does with track duplication, what you're going to do is you're going to take um, you're going to duplicate the tracks. So you have two of the same track. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pan one of these tracks hard left. You're going to pan one of them hard right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to delay one of the tracks. So um, basically delay it just by a small amount, maybe like 10, 20, 30 milliseconds or whatever. And what that does is it the second track will be hard right 
and that will play slightly after the one that plays hard left, so it gives it more of a stereo sound. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. What I did was I made a group in Ableton. Um, I've got the same track that I played before. I've got two of these now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to pan it hard left. It's going to be 50L and then I'm going to take the second one and pan it hard right. It's going to be 50R. And um, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this second track and I'm going to delay it by 20 milliseconds. Um, so you, with, with Ableton you can do that right here. I'm not sure about other dolls. Another thing you can do if, if you don't have that option you can change that back and you can take this track and um, basically just nudge it over slight you know just slight that way or whatever you can do that too but I'm gonna go ahead and put in 20 here that's gonna delay that 1 by 20 milliseconds and then another thing you want to do is you're gonna bring down the volume on those because you're playing two now instead of just the one so you're gonna bring that volume down to keep it you know consistent with what you had before so um, so now I'm going to play these and let you hear what this sounds like. This is a good technique. I use this technique a lot. Uh, it's also good for mixing vocals. So for the third technique, uh, this is random panning. This is somewhat of an Ableton Live specific um, technique, although I'm sure this can be applied to other DAWs. So I'm going to speak on this specifically to Ableton Live. Um, if you're familiar with Ableton Live, you're familiar probably with the simpler and sampler instruments. And within each of these instruments, there's a built-in uh, random panning function. Now what you're seeing right now down here at the bottom is a drum rack, and then inside of each of these uh, pads is a sampler. And then with each of these samplers, there is a, a random panning function. So a lot of times what I do just to give subtle and somewhat, again, random uh, panning, I'll just increase this percentage just a little bit. Maybe say 10%. Um, you can go extreme with this also. And maybe, maybe I'll go extreme just so you can hear. Um, you can actually hear it. So I'm going to take this up to 30%. Then this is only going to use this. This is only um, right now on this one sampler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to copy value to sibling so that's going to apply this same percentage to every single one of these um, one of these pads now if you're you know you don't know anything about what's going on right now if you do chop samples this again this is a sample that, that I chopped um, I have another tutorial to check out if, if you're you know interested in learning how to chop samples with Ableton Live so uh, check that out also if you're interested um, but anyway I'll get back to this so what it does took that up to 30 percent now what that does is it just randomly um, it, and it goes the water the higher the percentage of the water and wider it goes so I'm gonna go ahead and play this so you guys can just hear kinda what this does so I've applied 30 percent random panning to um, to this sequence So you might say that's too much. So again, I usually do this very subtly, just maybe 10% or something like that, just to give it a little bounce back and forth. Um, this is good. I, again, I use this a lot. I use this in most all of my sample production. Um, I use this technique. This is good. For, I also do this in hi hats. I do this a lot in my hi hats. Sometimes, depending on what, I'll take it extreme left, extreme right. 
Um, but this is another good one I use for, again, for sampling and for, um, for drums as well. Alright, so this is the last technique I'm going to touch on that I use in my production to widen your mix. Um, this is using a third party plugin called, uh, from Waves called Doubler 2. Um, so I'm going to take Doubler 2 and I'm going to drag it in on this, this track. This is what the plugin looks like. And this is going to be very similar um, to the second technique we talked about, which is track duplication, where you duplicate the track, you pan one hard left, one hard right, and then you delay the second one by X amount of time. Um, so this is very similar. So that's what you see here, voice one and voice two are your hard left pan right here, and then hard right pan is here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this middle track or this direct, so you just have your hard left and hard right. Um, and then you'll see here the delay is 9.4 milliseconds for voice one and 23.7 milliseconds for voice two. And then another thing that this does is adds a detune to, um, to the track. So sometimes I'll leave that and sometimes I'll take it out depending. Um, so I'll just put that down to zero, take out the detuning, leave that first one on 9.4 and then put this on 30 and um, let you hear how that sounds. So again, like I said, that that's very similar to the second technique. I like using this plugin a lot. Um, so again, I use all these techniques. From it just depends on depending on the, um, the the track that I'm working on. So I hope that helps. Um, if you guys have any other questions, if you want me to do any other particular tutorials, anything Ableton Live specific, anything not, um, you know. Shoot me a message, drop a comment, make sure to comment, subscribe, um, and rate the video. If you liked it, if it helped you out, uh, that, that means a lot, it shows your support. Um, you can also check out my website, is www.tcustoms.com, the link will be in the description. As always, free drum kits, I have a free beat, you sign up for the newsletter, um, all that stuff. And anyway. Like I said, let me know uh, what you guys want to hear next. Until next time, peace.